Welcome back. Um, we have um, our most recent lesson, and we discussed um, just a summary of the uh, math curriculum design. Today, uh, I'm here to give you a comprehensive analysis of the math curriculum, but we need to go back in time and um, recollect or uh, recall uh, the things that we learned in the, in the past. So to, to remind ourselves, we said that the curriculum is based on three main parts, uh, which were the philosophy, the blocks, or, and the last one was the psychology of it. And then when we discussed the blocks, we said there were six blocks, but now it has become relevant to limit it to about four blocks as um, we reviewed the curriculum and uh, identified that if um, we stick to the six, we will just be going back and forth and uh, we shall be repeating most of the concepts. So we limited the number of blocks to four. So it's no longer six blocks, and uh, we have the psychology. So the new development in relation to the blocks is that um, we shall have the the first block is maintained, which talks about uh, the blocks or the central ideas here. My my. Just forgive me, I've got very bad handwriting. Block or central ideas. And uh, previously we said they were six, but we've now limited it to four. So uh, the first one is evolution, evolution, organization, and classification in math and the second one um, relates to what we call measurements 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 standardization Standardization and uh, uniformity, uniformity or pattern recognition, pattern recognition and and parallelism, parallelism. Now, the change that we've made is now we've combined the, the arts and the, the science and the summary and simplification in maths and the one, and the one um, block or central idea. So now we have the, the arts and science of mathematics of mathematics in focus and when we get here we get to realize that they learn better when we combine all these because uh, with the data summary and simplification we were mostly going to deal with um, probability and statistics but when you look at it critically, it should fall under this. So uh, we've taken that one. So the summary and simplification will fall under the art and science of mathematics and focus. And the last part of the block is critical thinking. In the critical thinking, we shall uh, consider what we call predictions. We should be able to make predictions and um, 
ingenuity, ingenuity, and what we call concept synthesis. Should be able to develop concept or yeah, concept synthesis or development. So now we have four blocks. Uh, what happens is uh, anytime that we get to each of the blocks, uh, we shall bring the critical thinking sorry into play so that we shall know which new predictions or which predictions we can make, some ingenuity or innovative ideas and uh, some concepts that we shall talk about. And in doing so, what we shall do is, on the basis of your understanding of the topics, we shall let you develop your own questions. Yeah, you develop your own questions. So what we shall do is, as the page grows, we we'll let you send your questions and we give your questions to other members to solve and then they'll return them so that it, it will be very interactive so that's what we'll be doing you will submit your questions and then we shall allocate uh, you know the questions from each two other members of the page for them to solve and then summon them as assignments and that will be the part of the critical thinking yeah so that's it. So we, before we, we shall come to this session of it, but we need to start with the other major components, which are the psychology and philosophy in mathematics. So we shall focus on those. And uh, let's start with the philosophy of mathematics. So just to let you know, um, the philosophy of mathematics. Mathematics. You know, in ancient times, those who developed scientific concepts were called philosophers, and uh, they were philosophers or anything. And these people, um, talks or develop ideas based on evidence and that's why uh, now these days we talk about science it was actually philosophy in which they they would develop a new idea based on evidence so they coin a term and they investigate into it and analyze how it works so it's very important so philosophers were fundamental to the development of man's concepts and we are now going to talk about the importance of philosophy in mathematics. So we say that um, mathematics uh, was present during the creation of the universe and uh, we know that everything that is found in our environment was created by someone. So, you know, religiously we can say that nature was created by a supreme being that you know, so many um, religions give different or a variety of names to you. But in our context, we shall say that um, mathematics was present during the creation of the universe and God himself um, created the universe, applying mathematics both aesthetically, as in an, so aesthetically in this form, I mean. So he applied it aesthetically. Mm. And uh, or artistic in the sense, and uh, aesthetically and scientifically. So, and scientifically, scientifically. So, when we talk of the philosophy of maths, uh, we are going to talk about the aesthetics which deals with how we learn through our senses. Senses, learning, uh, learning with our senses, learning with our senses. So we know uh, the various senses, we have a sense of sight and touch and taste, smell and sound. So basically, we learn 
uh, using these senses. And these senses enable us to appreciate uh, whatever that we learn. So in the, in, in the case of sight, you know, if you are able to judge the beauty of something that is with aesthetic, aesthetic part of philosophy and uh, artisans are able to design. So you, you could realize that there are so many infrastructure that you would love to see. There are so many places, even in nature, there are so many places you would like to visit that confirms that um, the universe was created based on uh, philosophy and in that regard using um, an artistic um, approach to create a universe. So that's how it is. And we come to the scientific component here. In this regard, we're looking at how calculations were used to create the universe. And when you continue to read, you realize that um, got this uh, partition between the earth, this partition between the earth and the waters or the sea or the sea. Uh, because this was cleverly calculated, you realize that it hardly happens that the water crosses to the earth. You get what we mean? And in that sense, it makes um, mathematics use what we call calculations, calculations, and maybe organization. So how to organize things, organization. We shall talk about that in one of our central ideas. So that's how the word was made, using acts of philosophy in this regard, in the form of arts and science, you see. So that, that's fundamental what we shall say about it. But let's now take each of them into details and see how we get to understand um, each of them. So we shall deal with the first one, which talks about the it talks about the um, mass as, as a science, mass as a science. And but before I read that, let me read the introduction to the philosophy in detail or, or completely to you. And I move to mass as a science. So uh, just give me a moment. I'm struggling with my marker here. So we shall take mass as a science. But before that. Let me read the introduction to the philosophy of mathematics. So we said that mathematics was present during the creation of the universe, and God himself created the universe, applying mathematics both aesthetically or artistic form and scientifically. It is also obvious that mathematics is used in our daily lives. Yes, very, very obvious. You need to pay the bills, you need to pay for food and all of that. All of these are based on mathematics. You, you know, you have to plan your, your your budget. So suppose you've got maybe fifty pounds the entire day, uh, and you you would like to make use of these fifty pounds. You know that you have to set priorities. So priorities. So prioritizing is important. And in priorities, we are talking about organization and classification in that sense. So you, you have to set priority so that you make good use of this value. Yeah, the 50 pounds or maybe 50 dollars or 50 euros, any amounts, 50 in any currency. So you set priorities for all that. And moreover, yeah, mathematics is used in our daily lives uh, because uh, if you think of your birthday, you get what we mean, you realize that you need numbers to remember your birthday. So if you were born in maybe the 12th of June, 1998, this is how you write it. So you see that these will be explained in detail. You know that the numbers here will apply to mathematics. Now, your birthday, which is written this way, 12 of June, 1998, is scientific because we've summarized it 
to see a spirit. That's how scientists think. That's what science intends to do, to create convenience and to save space. You get what we mean. And in art, you write this one as uh, my birthday is on birthday on the on the twelve the twelve is it is it correct on the twelve sorry on the twelve of June nineteen. Ninety-eight, right? So this is how you know in litera literature or in art. So the arts that we are going to use, we are going to use the visual arts or the fine arts and the linguistics. So this is linguistically represented. You say linguistically represented, and this one is kind of very a long, very long expression, and it can be compressed into. A very short expression like this one. So when you look at your apps, what software developers do is they key in this summarized data and it appears on your device as this. So when you use your phone, when they do their coding, this is what they write, and it appears on your phone as this for you to use. The same applies to the video games and all the graphics that you use. So that's what makes mathematics really, really important and in terms of developing algorithms. So math is really important. Please let me know if I'm rushing you because that's not something I would like to do. I want you to um, understand what we're going to teach and not just follow because it's important you get to understand each of the concepts. And, um, so, math, math as a science, uh, we shall focus on this one, and uh, we still reading from the introduction. So, um, in, in this sense, we realize that um, artistic mathematician uses more expressions as opposed to a scientific mathematician. Sorry for that. Who's, inter who's interested in? Um, who is interested, sorry for that, who is interested in uh, summarized data. Philosophically, uh, math is the intersection of both art and science. So, it's just the intersection. Sorry, I'm not a good artist, forgive me. It's the intersection of both. So, let's say this is art and this is science. And this is where math is found. So in the intersection of both, so this is my context. The intersection of both arts and science. So kind of they are interlinked or interrelated or interlinked, like the that way. You know, I have speak impairments and sometimes I, I just get some things wrong. Or interrelated, I don't know how to spell it. Interrelated, yeah. So or they intersect.